Hey YouTube, welcome back to The Bunker. This is Detroit coming to you with another episode of Axis and Allies the Garrison with another episode of the YouTube Wars. So it is the UK's turn and the UK is under the command of our good friend, Sire Blood. Now, listen, the UK is definitely under a lot of pressure. The last uh, couple of rounds, rounds one and two, uh, the UK has been experiencing uh, a massive, massive pressure coming from not only Japan, but in particularly Germany, okay? The UK has seen successive losses of its battle fleets. The UK has seen the losses of its air forces, okay? So definitely a lot of things have not gone well for the UK. And I would like to see now what it is or how uh, Sired goes about. He definitely has got to do something to turn this ship around because it's been a tough, tough, very fir uh, rough first two rounds for the UK. But we all know how Sired is. He's very crafty. And I can assure you that he will not disappoint this round. All right, guys, uh, enjoy this uh, episode. And as always, let me know what you think. Look forward to your commentaries. All right, so it is Syed's turn. Syed is under the command of not only the UK, uh, Europe, but he's also in command of the Chinese in, uh, uh, forces in Asia. So let's go ahead first with the purchases that he made. For his uh, Chinese, uh, he has 17 IPCs. He's recruiting a total of uh, five infantry divisions for a total of 15 IPCs, which means then that he'll be carrying over two IPCs for round three. All right, so let's go ahead with the combat movements. China will be declaring only one battle, and that'll be uh, the liberation of the Chinese province of Shahar. Okay, so you have the one infantry moving up north from Hopi. Okay, you'll move up north. Uh, in effect, liberating uh, Shahar from the Japanese okay, occupation. All right, so let's go now straight into non-combat movements. You'll have one infantry from Sri Yuan moving east towards Shahar. You'll have another infantry division from Shanxi province into Hopi province, okay, the fighter uh, in Shenzi will move up north and land in Sri Yuan, okay, so that's where these forces are being moved to. Now, as far as the five recruited uh, divisions, uh, one is going to go into Kuechao, okay, and the remaining four are going into Shahar. So let's do that. So in Shahar, the Chinese will have a total of six infantry divisions, okay? So that's uh, about it for the Chinese. I believe the Chinese should be collecting uh, nine IPCs. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine IPCs. Uh, they're carrying over two IPCs, uh, which means that uh, they'll have a total of 11 IPCs for round three. Okay, now let's keep in mind that the Chinese were unable to uh, take the, uh, not only not able to, they could, did not have the uh, forces necessary to retake the province of Yunnan. And of course, that is a tactical, uh, uh, I guess, I don't want to say defeat, but uh, it, is a, it is a tactical and strategic disadvantage for them because if, uh, as long as Yunnan is not taken, the Burma Road is in, is in essence out of commission, which means that the Japanese are denying the Chinese the national objective of six IPCs. It also means then that the Chinese cannot purchase any artillery, cannot purchase any tanks, and cannot purchase any light armored or light cavalry units for their war effort. Okay, but having said that though, uh, the Chinese are looking pretty decent. Okay, considering uh, uh, the fact that the Japanese have been putting a lot of pressure on them. All right, so let's quickly time. review the ground and naval situation for the uh, UK uh, forces, uh, not only in the European theater side of the war, but in the Pacific as well. Okay, so currently uh, the UK has a serious, serious situation here in the Mediterranean where the Axis powers have been able to uh, rest control of the Mediterranean from the Allies. So you have here a combined, in Season 93, Axis fleet 
in, which is uh, made up of uh, one submarine, a yes, a German aircraft carrier, an Italian cruiser and destroyer. Okay. Then you have a secondary naval uh, fleet, smaller in season 96 off the coast of Malta. Okay, where the Italians took uh, 96. They were with uh, uh, that fleet is composed of a battleship, a cruiser, two naval transports. And the Italians were also able to take Malta. Okay, so very interesting uh, situation. And uh, we have to also remember that uh, the British have lost uh, two naval, uh, two fleets, early round one, uh, round two. And the British also lost a, the, the entirety of the Air Force round one. Uh, Sire did make a heavy investment by buying, uh, re, 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 uh, what is it, uh, uh, replacing his lost aircraft uh, around two by purchasing an entire new air, uh, air uh, what is it, air force. What is Sire going bridge? to do then with this fleet that he has in C Zone 76? It's a pretty powerful fleet, okay? Uh, the question that we all have is, is he going to use this fleet against the Japanese who are poised for a potential attack on Calcutta, all right? So it may make sense for him to deploy his fleet into season 39 and help with the defense of Calcutta or will he instead turn that fleet west and back into the Mediterranean where then he denies the Italians control of the Mediterranean all right so it's very interesting uh we have a lot of uh, uh evolving uh situations here uh the British let's not forget still control Egypt and they have a pretty serious or considerable army group here uh, in Egypt. So it may be that Syed will turn his attention back into the Mediterranean. So he has a, a definite uh, interest in looking at that direction as well. All right. So then uh, that's about it for the, the ground conditions. Uh, then let's uh, go ahead and look at the purchases that uh, the UK made. The UK starts this turn with a total of 47 IPCs. The UK will be purchasing one airbase, one naval transport, two infantry, and three armored units for a total of 46 IPCs. That means then that the UK will be carrying over one IPC for round three. Okay, so one, one additional IPC left over from these purchases. All right, so let's go over the uh, combat movements. All right, so Sire went ahead and will be declaring a total of four battles for the UK uh, this turn. So the first battle will be the, the battle uh, in season 91, okay, uh, where it's being declared already. The second battle is the battle in uh, Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. That's battle number two. Uh, battle number three will be Kiangsi and Kiangsu. All right, so let's uh, go and recap uh, the first battle. So the first battle uh, is is as follows: This naval, uh, this uh, Royal Air Force uh, fighter squadron is coming over from England at a movement of three. That's uh, one, two, and three. It will sink the German naval transport. Okay, it has two uh, movements left in its uh, uh, fuel gauge. And it'll then go ahead and land in Algeria. Okay, so that's battle number one. Uh, battle number two is the battle for Anglo-Egyptian Sudan, where you have one tactical bomber and one uh, uh, fighter coming over from the British uh, aircraft carrier uh, in season 76. Okay, so that's a movement of one. Both of uh, these aircraft will have three so let me see, uh, we'll have one and two. These aircraft will have two movements left in their fuel gauges. You have an additional tactical bomber and fighter coming from Egypt. And these aircraft will have three movements left in their fuel gauges. You have two British infantry divisions heading south, coming from Egypt and attacking the two Italian infantry divisions defending anglo occupied Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. So this is battle number two. Now, let's go over to the UK uh, Pacific uh, Theater 
of war where now things really got interesting and especially they they became very interesting here because uh this is where sired excels at surprising uh his opponents by performing those sneak attacks that nobody for some reason sees at least i didn't see uh the following move uh okay the following move consisted of one naval transport that was here uh hidden with the uh, Japanese fleet in C-Zone 36, okay, remember that earlier around 1, that naval transport had come over from uh, C-Zone 39 and had dropped off uh, one British infantry in French Indochina, but because the uh, the UK and Japan were not at war, those that naval transport could drop off the infantry division and, and still occupy the same C-Zone with the Japanese uh, fleet in, in the same sea zone. Okay, now what he did is that he takes that naval transport, makes steam, picks up the one infantry division in Quang Tong, and lands it in Kiang Su. Okay, and liberates this uh, uh, Chinese province for the Chinese. In the process, the Japanese in the minor industrial complex is destroyed. Brilliant move, very well played. I gotta give it to him. Uh, I did not see that coming. In all honesty, I very surprised. Good for him. This is a, a tactical victory that definitely uh, the UK needed. Uh, the UK has been taking a, a beating the last couple of turns or rounds, and this is a morale booster for them, without a doubt. Okay. So then the uh the fourth and final battle uh, it takes place in Kiangxi where you have the remaining british infantry in hong kong moving up north and liberates the japanese the chinese province of kiangxi for the chinese all right so this is the current uh results of uh, combat for the british very interesting round okay very uh, interesting set of moves that the uh, that Sired made for his uh, UK forces. All right. Um, by the way, this battle here, battle for Anglo-Egyptian Sudan, I'm forgetting that uh, it was already rolled. Okay. The Italians fought a hell of a battle. Okay. They were taken out. Both Italian infantry divisions were lost. Not before, though, taking out the two attacking British infantry divisions. So, in essence, the the... It, the uh, what is it the the territory of Anglo Egyptian Sudan remained Italian. Okay, the the British were unable to effectively retake Anglo Egyptian Sudan from the. All right, Italian. so let's go ahead with the non combat movements. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, the fighter that attacked the naval transport in season ninety one actually did not come from the UK from England. It came from Scotland. Okay. However, because there was an air base in Scotland, that fighter still landed in Algiers, well, Algeria. Okay, so let's go ahead then with the remaining combat movements. So in England, you have three fighters, okay, that will uh, take off and at a movement of five, will head over to Algeria. So that's going to be one, two, three, four and five so now in algeria you're, you're going to have a total uh of four fighter squadrons of the british uh royal air force okay so that's a total of four fighters in algeria currently all right so let's go over to season number 76 the royal navy will guess what royal navy is going mediterranean okay very interesting at a movement of two one and two heads over into C zone 98. All right, so now the British Royal Navy is in C zone 98. Okay, the two fighters, okay, uh, will land that attack the Anglo Egyptian Sudan, will land in Cairo. Okay, I'm gonna place them right there, and the two tactical bombers will land in not in on the aircraft carrier okay 
All right, let me just mention that I believe this may not be correct. I don't believe you could actually land two tactical bombers on an aircraft carrier. Uh, I could be wrong on that. I will check the rules later, but that's something that may be correct later on. If anything, we could always do a swap where you have one fighter and one tactical bomber on the carrier. But that's, uh, I will have to check the rule book. It's been a while since I read that portion of the, of the rules. So let's continue and go ahead then with uh, the other movements. Okay, the British Infantry Division. Okay, that's in Eastern Persia. We'll uh, move into Persia and we'll annex Persia. Persia now will, there you will have two British Infantry Divisions that are being recruited from the local army. Okay, so now you have three British uh, infantry divisions in Persia. And because it's a pro-allied territory, they become part of the allied forces. All right, so let's go over into Burma. Okay, in Burma, you have one infantry division heading west and will link up with the rest of the British uh, army in India. You have the British fighter in Burma at a movement of three, one, two, and three will land in Persia. Okay, the British bomber, season number 39, will head uh, east and will move into season 39. Okay, so now it's British uh, battleship is going back to where it had originally come from earlier on in round one. Okay, and uh, the two British infantry divisions in Malaya will head up north and move into Shan State. Okay, the infantry division in Burma will remain there, the one that was left, and it'll remain in Burma. All right, so then let's go ahead then with the placements of new units. Uh, the air base is going to go in Egypt. Okay, in South Africa, you're going to have a newly placed naval transport along with one armor and one infantry division. Okay, the remainder will be two armored units. Okay, and one infantry being placed in Calcutta. Okay, so in Calcutta, you should have eight infantry, one artillery, three triple A's, two armored units, and once again, eight infantry. And that's what's defending uh, Calcutta from the Japanese. Okay, interesting move here that uh, Sired made with his British battleship. I think his intent is to block off uh, the, or act as a blocking uh, element uh, in order to block the Japanese fleet from going into India later on. All right, three. so the British will be collecting 50 IPCs that they will be taking to uh, their treasury and that will be utilized uh, for round three. All right, so this is the end. Very interesting round for uh, the UK definitely uh, I like the moves that uh, so that Sired made in the Pacific especially with the destruction of the minor complex in Kiangsu as you can see the British even though they uh, had very few forces they were able to effectively neutralize uh, the Japanese in this region okay uh, however things are getting tough for the allies in the Pacific especially in Southeast Asia and India and in the Pacific as well. So we will see how things develop. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's very interesting. Same thing in the Mediterranean. Uh, something is brewing up here. As you can see, the, both the Italians and the British, the UK, are building up their forces. And I expect some sort of big uh, either naval engagement or some sort of uh, big ground, ground battle uh, to take place, if not round three. Maybe potentially round four. That's just me uh, thinking out loud here. All right, guys. As always, uh, thanks for uh, watching uh, this episode. And I hope that you enjoyed what you watched today. So let me know what your thoughts are. And uh, let me know if the strategies that you're seeing here will be something that you would use in your own gaming. As always, don't forget to bunker down and play.